For this video, I'll be sharing with you some very cool 3D CSS tricks while showing you how to build this awesome flipping debit card with a simple technique you can use on anything. I got a lot of cool tricks to share with you when it comes to CSS 3D world, creating realistic effects like this card gloss and or brightness animation and so much more. Show me your support by subscribing to the channel and liking this video. Now, let's jump into it. I have here a simple style for the body to center everything on the right. As always, I box size, border box everything, and I'm also removing the ability to select text for this example. Let's start with the HTML for the card, and for this one, it will be a simple card class div with two side class divs inside. The first one will be the front side and the other one the back, and that's all for now. Back on the CSS, by the way, I am using SCSS for this video. The card is 400 by 240 with position relative and a gray background so we can see it. I'll position the sides absolute to it with the width and height of 100%. To see the sides, I'll make the front side background red and the back is green. We are only seeing this green because it comes last in the HTML, therefore stays on top of it. If I remove the position absolute, we can see both of them now. I also round their corners for a more card-like shape and remove the background on the card. What I want to do is when I hover over the card, I want it to rotate on the y-axis 180 degree. Y-axis is the vertical axis by the way. When I do that, nothing happens. At least you can see it. The card is actually flipping 180 degree and instantly. Because the green is always on top and both sides of the green is visible, it appears like nothing is working. I can try to make the back side back face hidden with back face visibility property and still nothing. More on this problem in a little, by the way. So when you are doing 3D transform, it is important to set the perspective, meaning how far are you looking at the object being transformed. In this case, the card. And I'll say that I am looking at this card from a thousand pixels distance. And perspective must go in any of the ancestors element, in this case, the body. Now when I manually change the degree, we see it rotate. Same goes for when I hover over this, but I'll change it to 100 pixels because the front and the back both appear green and whether it is 0 or 100 degree, it will look the same. I'll set the transition on the transform so we see it happen smoothly. Another thing we need to tell the browser is to preserve the transform 3D, otherwise these sides are rendered flat. More on that in a little as well. So both sides are facing towards us, and I already set the back side to be hidden. But what I want is for them to be back to back, so I'll flip the back side 180 degrees so it's back surface towards us now. Like that, now we see the front red and when we hover over, we see the back green. To better explain this, note that both the front and the back sides divs are planes, and by planes I mean rectangles in a 3D space. That means that they contain a front and a back face because we set the transform style on the card to preserve 3D. The front side is at the normal position facing us, therefore we can see it. The back side is flipped 180 degree which puts it back face towards us and since I set the back face visibility to be hidden, we can't see it. Pretty much the back face visibility tells the browser not to render the back face of the rectangle plane. When I hover over the card, the inverse happens. The front side flips putting its hidden back towards us in which makes it disappear. Then the back side flips moving its front face towards us, therefore revealing it. I'll add a text as an additional side indicator for now. I don't want this on hover, so I'll add a click event to the card where I get the current target, aka the element which I attach the listener to, aka the card, and simply toggle the flip class using the class list. Like that, now the card flips on click instead of hover. To make sure you understood everything, let me mess with the perspective a little more so you can better understand it. When I change it to 100 pixels, it's like the card is flipping right next to our eyes. 
When I make it zero, it appears flat, like it is shrinking side to side. I normally go for 600 or 1000, which seems to always do for me, but always experiment to get the right distance for you. The Preserve 3D Transform style is telling the browser about how to render the children of the card, in this case, the sides. Without it, we lose the ability of these sides to actually have both faces. Without Preserve 3D, these sides are rendered flat. As you can see, we only see the front side without it. When the card is flipped, we rotate the card on the Y axis 180 degree, then on each side we are hiding the back face and only render the front while putting this side back to back by making the back side 180 degree by default. Actually there is another way around this back face thing. The reason we need it is because both sides are at the exact same Z coordinate. Pretty much they occupy the same space which the browser struggles to render sometimes when both sides are visible and at the same coordinate. This is why it is flickering now. By hiding the back, the browser renders only one and then the other depending on the angle of rotation. What we can do is change the front side Z coordinate and without the hidden back face, now it does not flicker. Z coordinate controls how close or far it is from us looking at it. Let me slow it down so you can see the gap between the sides. And this is because I moved the front side on the Z index much closer to us. I'll also increase the gap in case you missed that. I normally use the Z index instead of back face hiding as it works better for the things I need it for and to also make the card thicker by adding additional size forming a box. Subscribe for a video on that later. I'll keep Z translation at 1 pixel for this example and it should work smoothly. Now I want to give it a fact like it is in the room with the light source which shines on the surface of the card and the brightness move with the movement of the card. Let me show you what I mean. I'll remove this text first and to accomplish that I'll give it a gradient background instead. For the gloss I'll set a radial gradient of a circle, no repeat. The color must be the same color of the background but brighter so now I'll add the background using the linear gradient which is just red. The radial gradient is on top so I'll make it this back linear gradient a darker red so we can see the gloss. Perfect. What I want is to have this gloss top left, then as the card rotates, it should move to the bottom right. I'll give it position and size of 100%, which are the defaults. If I make it 200 by 200, we see the shiny part is at the bottom right. And this is because the shiny part is at the center. So if we make it double width and height, we see the top left corner of the card. We can actually control the where we position the circle but this is harder to animate. So what we will control is the position of this gradient and we'll set it the bottom right to make it shiny part appear on the top left corner of the card. And when I flip the card, I'll move it to left top. I'll also set transition for the position only. If we try it now, we see it move to bottom right. It's pretty cool, huh? In case that was too fast, I'll slow things down now. Maybe this was too slow, but let me address this delay first. So when we start to flip, we want to transition immediately to the bottom right. And when we are flipping back to normal, I wanted to wait for the card flip to the point the front side appears to then start animating the gloss back to the top left. Now we can see the card shiny part move with the rotation for a more realistic look. Now for the back side, we want to do the same thing pretty much in reverse. Where it is top left become bottom right, the delay is also reversed. Like that we get our effect which will look way better when we style the card to look like a debit card. So let's do that quickly, shall we? For the front side, I'll add an image for the logo, then a card holder name, which will be the before semicolon, and an expiration date. 
I found a nice Bank of America logo, so I'll use it for this card example. I'll also give it a glass. I'll make a logo 200 pixels, which is 50% of the card width. Position it absolute, top left zero. Something is odd about this image, so let's inspect it. Wow, the image has extra blank space, but that's okay. That only means I'll set the top negative something. Okay, now that looks good. For the card holder name, I'll distance it from the top with margin top. I'll also add some padding to the card sides as well. For the expiration date, I only want some space in between these letters. Now let's change this card color. Just realized I've been messing around with two backgrounds, so we don't need this first one. I picked a nice color for this. And to make it brighter, SCSS comes with a function called lighten. So I'll pass the same color and the percentage of how light I want it. For the card holder name, I'll use RGBA function to pass it light gray and change its alpha value of 0.8 to make it semi-transparent. Some bottom margin to distance it from the expiration date. One thing we need is the chip of the card. I found a nice chip PNG image on Google for this as well. I'll position it the very top right center and make it 120 pixels to no repeat. But I think these chips are not centered, right? Um, I'll push it up at 40% just in case. Now I need to also set its position when flipped to stay the same. For the back side, I picked an image on Google as well. So I'll set it a background by copying this one. I'll also store the link in a variable. Now I need to resize and position this. It's going to be center. Let's try 120% white. Let me also lighten this background a little. I need to also set its position here when I when flip as well. Now let's find a better size that will do. I just realized making the color lighten won't work for this side. I need to make it transparent so we can see the image under. So I'll use the RGBA function instead and play with the alpha value. All right, now pretty happy with this. I just realized I forgot the card number, but check the link to the source code below and follow my social media accounts while at it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like this video to support me. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.